Welcome back. And in this part, we're going to take a look at how to actually include Django and Viron into our Django project. So the first thing we need to figure out, I obviously know uh, of my Django project, which settings file is loaded in what event, but in case you don't know which settings file is used, um, I basically start with my main entry point, which is would be the Docker Compose YAML, um, or a secondary entry point, if you're very familiar with Django, would be obviously the manage py in your uh, Django application or Django project. Um, we would have figured it out obviously here. And in this one, we see that by default, we're using tickets.settings.dev unless we're setting Django settings module to something. So I can actually take a look at what is tickets.settings.dev. Can take a look here. There we go. I have a base PY, dev PY, prod PY. Um, some of you might also only have one settings PY. That's also fine. You would have something like that would have been here, like tickets.settings for you. Um, I've made a Django package out of it in a previous video. I will add a link in the video description for that. All right, now my IDE is slowing. There we go. Uh, I just had a, a hiccup in the IDE. So basically we're gonna start with our dev PY and what does our dev PY include? It basically says from ticket.settings.base which is this one, import everything. And then we're overriding the secret key, debug and our allowed hosts. All right, so that's gonna be a good entry point for now. Um, this is something we're gonna modify basically with what we have written here, like a dot .n file with that. All right, the first thing we need to install Django and Viron. And I always like to look up the version of the library I'm installing on PyP before I'm actually installing it because I'm not installing it with pip, I'm installing it using uh, requirements.txt within a Docker file that uses pip. So technically I am using pip, but I'm not like, I, I can't debug pip or find out what version is the right one. So I'm gonna just add that into my requirements file here, base.txt. Uh, I think it was 0 0.4.5. And I always like to go like, yeah, let's let's take the next minor or patch version um, in case they have a security issue or something, but don't go any further than that because yeah, why? All right, um, we need to do a Docker Compose build now. So our Python image gets rebuilt. In one of the last videos, I've shown you how to make your Docker file uh, look a little bit more, let's say, uh, friendly or to improve the build size and build time by reordering the commands in here. So uh, we're taking some advantage of that, although not full advantage because we modified our requirements. All right, uh, at the same time, I'm gonna take a look at my tickets, settings, base PY, and what I need to do according to the docs because there is something in here that we need to do. We need to import our environment and we need to read our environment. So I'm gonna scroll up to my base PY, or if you have a settings PY, you would scroll up to in, within your settings PY and do that. It's obviously gonna complain now because uh, it's not finding that thing. Um, this is because the IDE doesn't know yet that our Docker image has been rebuilt. Um, we'd have to set our project interpreter. Actually, it's not even there. So uh, yeah, let's add it quickly. So we've get that out of our way. We have a Docker Compose interpreter. Uh, we want to use the Python service and that should be fine. We don't need to do that actually, but uh, it helps if you can just have the setup complete, obviously. All right, uh, while that one is working, um, we're gonna take a quick look at what we need to do. We need to rewrite our code a little bit in our base PY and have some of the settings in here come from there. I mean, this is like uh, an example that we don't need to follow um, all the way around. So we're gonna follow it for debug and secret key for now. Um, we're gonna follow it partially for, def uh, for the databases, but not completely. Uh, all right, so it has imported the packages. Okay, cool, that seems to work. So let's start with what we have here. We've got secret key and debug, obviously, these two settings. Okay, they're vice versa now, it doesn't really matter. We wanna read them from our environment file. 
so the next thing we do want to read from our environment file is going to be databases. So I'm going to copy part of that. I'm actually going to look up our databases configuration that we have here. All right, that's this one. I'm going to comment that out and add it back like this. So um, what do we need to do here? Um, we will have to define a database that basically goes into a Postgres uh, uh, connection and uses tickets dot tickets with password tickets <laughs> and that we'll see later. Uh, caches, I don't think we have one, but I did see something down here that we have. It's a salary broker URL. So that one needs to be configured as well. I, I'm not sure if there is a built-in um, salary broker type. Let's see. No, I don't think so. It doesn't really matter because we can just say salary broker URL equals env. Yay, I do get some auto completion, although not full. Uh, I think it's env.string. We can look it up in the documentation. Actually, it says here it's got env.str for string, bool for boolean, integer, etc. You know the data types. And I think that's that's enough. We can just say this is env. String. Uh, what's nice, although we can say there is a default, so you would do it like this: default equals two. So uh, if you don't set that variable, you can default it to amqp. Uh, although I need to give it a name, obviously I forgot that. Sorry. Um, the name that we are looking for would be obviously also salary broker dot url. All right, we'll see that later in our environment. The other settings I'm leaving as they are right now, I think. That's fine. Um, just one quick thing. We're gonna go into our dev py. This is where we have like debug true and secret key. Um, I'm gonna delete the secret key. I'm gonna put debug true in here, although because this is my dev setup, basically. In my, in my dev setup, I wanna have it with debug true all the time. This is like, this is the way I want to have it. Like whatever is in our in my daughter, and if this is debug with true, I want that. However, my production py, I'm also gonna delete delete the secret key setting that I had here, and I'm gonna leave debug to false because in my prod py, I always want debug to be false regardless of the settings we have in our dot env. Um, these are basically just two examples that I want to use right now. You don't need to use that. You can go with base py or settings py and set your dot .env always. That's fine. It doesn't need to be, but yeah. Um, similarly, if you take a look um, here, we're going to take the environment variable from debug and it defaults to false. So um, here we're basically allowing that uh, you can override it. So it should be false all the time. So uh, what I do here, uh, sorry, what I do here, it shouldn't be necessary. But I want to prevent like some sort of accident happening. Let's say you copy paste some code and in the middle of the code somewhere here, you have debug equals to true. I mean, if that happens, you're like, okay, bad luck, but why do I need to like rely on this not happening? I just put it in here in my prod py def is debug is false and fine. All right. Now that we have it set up, um, I think I'm going to leave everything else as it is right now. We can say docker compose up. Let's see if it actually still starts up. I haven't created a dot and file yet, so it should probably tell me. Okay, it starts with, yeah, we don't have a secret key set. Let me scroll up, sorry. So it doesn't work. All right, that's fine. That was expected. Now we need to create a dot and file in here. And no, I don't want this added to my git for now. We're going to copy the example from the welcome tutorial and work from that. So debug equals to on right now. My secret key, I'm going to change that to something super secret. My database URL is almost fine. We're going to use PSQL. Uh, I think it's called ticket colon ticket at I think Postgres 5432 ticket. 
pro tip um, always comment out your original settings before you delete them and, and commit them it's actually tickets and not ticket uh, but the host name is postgres and the port is 5432 and we don't need the sqlite thing because we removed that we also don't need cache url we also don't need redis but what we do need is celery so Coincidentally, I've called the variable in here and the name of the variable in the .env the same. This would be the name you would be looking for in your .env. So your salary broker URL equals to amqp rabbitmq. All right. Now let's see what happens if we docker compose up. Okay, it's still complaining about my secret key, I think. That's final though, because I think what we're doing wrong right now is that we need to set the environment in here. I think it's called, in Docker Compose, it's called env files. And I think we need to list it here as .env. Invalid. Um, maybe it's a list. Let's put it like this. Okay, let me double check that. Sorry, Docker compose and files. Maybe the syntax is wrong. It's env underscore file. Hmm. There we go. It's not invalid anymore and it should start up just fine now. Yep, seems to be starting up. I mean, it's still booting up. It takes a little bit, but RabbitMQ seems to be not up yet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up now. Okay, there we go. Um, and if I open the page, Zero, 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 eighty, eighty. Ah, uh, sorry, I think it's eight thousand. There we go. I should be able to sign in. Yep. Ah, uh, there's a ticket even here. Cool. So that works. Now there's one last thing. I think I mentioned it in the last video. We have some redundancy in our configuration now because that, that's like in here postgres user db pass and it's also in here somehow but i would have to change it twice so if i ever say like that password is insecure i want something more secure then i would have to change it here and also in here and i don't want that really i don't want it and the trick that we can do right now in here is that we can reuse the variables that we have in uh, Docker Compose YAML. I'm gonna show you something. Um, I'm kind of cheating. This is also one of my repositories. Uh, what you can do here, you can have environment variables here. You can have your end file, but you can have environment variables here and you can set it like this. So we can just pass that on. So we're gonna set it environment and we're gonna set this database URL got the syntax uh, is like really weird sometimes I think but okay um, so we're gonna set the database URL here to Postgres and the whole string so basically that's the same as this one just with variables and instead of having database URL in here we're gonna have the database user, database password, database host, etc., in here. And obviously we need to make sure that down here we have that set up. So you can basically use variables in here. That's the neat thing. Um, yeah, that's wrong. Postgres DB is the database name and Postgres pass is the database password. So there we go. And I'm just gonna copy that whole string because I need to know what I'm working with. So we need database user equals tickets in our .env, database 
password equals tickets. I'm not using the super secret password now, but I'm yeah, using the old one for obvious reasons because you can't just change that, I think. Database host is Postgres and database port is 5432. We're gonna remove the database URL here. Oh, I think I forgot the database name. There we go. Database name is tickets. Make sure you don't have the dollar in front here. The dollar is just for bash syntax and for variables within Docker Compose. Um, yeah, so let's leave it like this. Database settings. And by specifying that we are gonna use the .env file here, we can also just say, hey, Postgres, use the .env file. And then the environment variables would work in here. Well, at least it should. Let's test my theory. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, Celery and Python complain that database URL is should be a string. Um, let me remove. I think the issue is that this up there is wrong. I need it like this. It's like a YAML file uh, syntax that it complains about. All right, that looks good. So uh, Django itself got up. I believe if it does go up, the database should also work. Yeah, I can I can access this thing. So that worked, and that means. Our initial setup is done for now. Um, one quick hint before you ask. You can obviously overwrite everything in here with uh, the env dot and whatever uh, type you want. And that also goes for your allowed hosts. In our case, we have our dev py with allowed hosts set to anything. And even our production py, we have allowed hosts set to anything. The reason for that is quite simple you don't want that host name to be restricted right now. You want it in your eventual setup and we get to it when we deploy this to Kubernetes, when we have an actual host name. And then we're gonna actually write like uh, env dot string. Oh, it's picking up the syntax now. Um, allowed, maybe even this like Django allowed hosts. And we're gonna default it to an asterisk. Actually, you know what, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that anyway. Um, I'm gonna remove that from my dev py and my allowed hosts because, yeah. And we're gonna override it in here. Uh, I think that's fine. I think this is an array, so I need to say split. What is it in, in there we go, string split. Ooh, actually, um, so we're gonna split this one. We're gonna separate them by a comma. So this is an array now. I'm gonna restart it just to test my theory. Um, and yeah, another thing that we need to do while we're restarting, this .env file, it contains your secret key. So this is like top secret. You don't want that in your Git. So I always add my .env files, plural, because I sometimes have more than one. Um, into the git ignore so they don't get committed. But what I do then is I create a new one and call it .env.example. That one I do add to git and then I copy paste that and make sure like everything that's in here is like normal so that works. And at the same time what I do is I make sure that the setup as it is works if you do docker compose up and I actually add it to the readme like copy the .env.example if you don't have it. All right, um, Django allowed hosts, I haven't said it. So if this comes up now, it should still work. Yeah, it still works. Uh, we could override Django allowed hosts for a production setup if you want to, but uh, that's for another day. All right, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next part. In the next part, we're gonna start writing our Kubernetes deployment YAMLs and we're gonna deploy it to a Minikube instance for now. See you soon.